I'm building the most connected community in the world for local entrepreneurs. You ever been in a mood where you just feel like you can kill it? I am fired yes. up. What if you had a cheat code that put yourself in that mood every day? Picture your child fighting for our freedom in a war zone and you know it. I was kicked out of schools by the time I was in junior high. I couldn't do basic schoolwork and it was because I don't learn like other people. What might make us feel weird about ourselves might be our biggest gift. How do you handle fear, uncertainty, doubt, like you mentioned? The one thing that I've been lucky enough to do is put people in my life that make me feel a little bit less afraid. What kind of people? Like my wife, like my son, he was shot in Afghanistan. So picture your child fighting for our freedom in a war zone and you know it, right? He, your kid is in a war zone and you know that he is in a war zone. Well, who are you? You're afraid. Right? Of course. You're afraid for your kid, yeah. man. Your kid gets it. My, my son got in a fight in high school, and, um, you know, that, you know, that kind of stresses out a parent, you know, because, oh, my son's fighting, right? Like a fist fight. Um, you know, your kids go to the first dance, and it's like, oh, shoot, you're, you're worried about them, you know? Hopefully they don't, you know, get into, hopefully have a good time. Hopefully they don't get into too much, you know, mischief that's uh, unhelpful. Um, we, as parents, we're, we're fearful at times about our kids. Well, I've got a person in my life that, you know, if you're going through something scary, you want to have somebody in there that's, you know, feels the way you do about the opportunity. So for me, that's number one, put people in your life like her. Um, but I think it's that same way in business. So my business partners, really, I built my business with my brother. I get all choked up. I built my business partner or uh, built my businesses originally with my brother. We had that. My current business partners, we've got that, right? The, we've got each other's back in a way that, like, man, I'm not going through it alone. So if, if I fail, if it doesn't go right, well, at least I got, you know, I'm going down with uh, people that are I got you know, love. fighting. Yeah, yeah. So to me, that's where it starts. If, if there's a, a, you know, one central theme to what can help you deal with your uncertainties, it's have those people in your life that make you feel a little bit less afraid. Hmm. I love that. Yeah. What about spirituality? What's your view on that? key mm. important whatever your uh faith is it's important that you are grounded in that um because i think that uh that's also a way to get through uh tough times and fearful times because our faith in our family our faith in a higher power or faith in God. Mm -hmm. um, those are the kinds of things that make you believe that it's what I tell my wife, uh, kind of like uh, whenever we're going through a tough time, like when my son was in Afghanistan, you know, I, I leave the house at zero dark, dark 30 every morning. And if we're going through something tough, you know, we tell each other that everything's going to be okay. And when you're, when you're thinking about faith and you know, if, if stuff you know, that you don't want to have happen happens still in the end, everything's going to be okay. If you've got some faith, mm. I believe that. And I feel like that's a really grounding feeling for others as well. I know that it grounds many of my closest relationships that we, we all feel that way. Mm. And, uh, I, I think it's that shared, um, belief, if you will, and it may not be the same uh, religion necessarily, but that same way of feeling that no matter what, everything's going to be okay. Those kind of feelings can bring people together if we're willing to talk about it. Mm. That's got to be a leadership attribute too. I mean, people are, if, if you're grounded so deeply in something that can get you through your child being in war, people are going to naturally find you as well as a source of information, inform Thank inspiration. You. Thank you. So I appreciate you sharing that personal stuff. What advice do you have for young guys in their 20s who want to do what you've done? First step. Have a cheat code. You definitely need a, a cheat code in life. Um, so, you know, again, t thinking about sports, I was, I was uh, not the best athlete. My son wasn't the best athlete, but 
we had vi- visions of grandeur, right? A lot of a lot of kids do. A lot of, and then as that stuff starts um, sort of fading away, as you get out, of, you realize you're not going to go to the pros. Uh, you know, you sort of have to regroup a little bit. Um, and so I, I think though that whether you want to make uh, you know the starting uh, baseball team in high school or football team in high school, or you want to make it to the pros. Um, or you want to, uh, you know, do something great in your life. If you've got the big aspiration, you've got to develop a cheat code and recognizing that we all need some sort of advantage. And so my advantage is, I call it 315, the moment of truth, right? I get up at 315 every morning. Do you really? I get up when everybody else is asleep. And I started that 25 years ago or so in the middle of my, you know, my entrepreneurial business, we had, you know, business all over the country and I needed to work out before, uh, you know, before our, you know, our East Coast Coast guys get to work. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to get up and get my workout in before everybody, um, before everybody, you know, so I can get to work and be there when everybody else gets there or before when everybody gets there. And so I ended up, you know, starting to get up really early and I found that there was this time, this alone time was almost like magical. Right. It's that time when I was able to remind myself of what I care about, who I want to be, what I want to accomplish in my life, what's important to me, what I'm grateful for. And it's that downtime when I uh, is pretty special for me. And so, you know, in terms of getting grounded, I think we need to get grounded for the day, grounded for the morning. So I still leave the house at zero dark 30. I leave the house at 520 every, every morning. And I've got up at, you know, 315 getting my mind right. Because I think, what are, you ever been in a mood where you just feel like you can kill it, man? I am I am fired yes. up. I am really, yes. we've all been in those moods. Well, what if you could put yourself in that mood? What if you had a cheat code in a way that put yourself in that mood every day, right? It's, a, it's probably impossible every day because uh, I stayed up, went to the Kings game. I stayed out too late, didn't get enough sleep, having trouble getting in the mood, right? But if you can get your life right, you can cut all the different things out or back in your life that allow you that prevent to, that mood. to get in, yeah, get enough sleep to get up early, okay, I've kind of got those things kind of dialed, now I'm up early to get myself in that mode, right, mm. that mode that makes me remember that I can do stuff that most people would think is impossible, so I'm in the mindset of like, don't get ready, be ready, and so, you know, when I walk into yoga or CrossFit, uh, you know, I'm the first one there typically, or one of the first people there a half hour early, I'm already ready. My mind's ready. I've been stretching at home. I've been, you know, uh, putting myself in the zone, if you will, prior. And that's my cheat code for winning in life. So that may not be everybody's cheat code, but like we all need a cheat code. I talked about the backyard advantage for entrepreneurs. Every business since my newspaper route when I was a kid and my video stores and my security cameras, each of us had a competitive strategy to it, right? Find yourself a cheat code. I got mine. Um, and who knows? You can have it if you want it, but it's, uh, it's not for everybody because it means getting up pretty freaking early. That's awesome. On the other side of that energy, that mood, at least for me, I, mine seems to ebb and flow. Like I, I can feel it for three, four days and there seems to be a, a down period. Do you have any ways that you manage yourself emotionally? So if you're going to grind it that hard professionally, what do you do personally to decompress from that? Yeah, the first thing I would say is get out in front of that and because you know it's going to happen and so be out in front of it. And so like the, we ha- the fatigue, you mean? I think be out in front of knowing that you are um, not always going to be rested enough to be ready in attack mode, right? You're going to have those, you push, 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 and then you're going to, so know that that's going to happen and and maybe know that you, you're you going to need to um, cut things out of your life because as entrepreneurs, I think anybody who's got some ambition, you know, we end up taking on more than what we can chew. You're biting off more than what we can chew at a lot of times. And so, yeah, I can do that. I'll help you with that. You know, so we end up doing too many things. And so I think we have to recognize that the better we carve out our niche, carve out our, our days, our days, uh, and, and be willing to say no to some things or mm-hmm. yes, if, right? Yes, when the time is right, uh, be able to say no a little bit, then we're going to have these uh, these days where we uh, are uh, exhausted. 
Um, they're going to be fewer and far between. They're, of course, going to happen because we're going to have a window of opportunity. We're going to go all in and we're going to kill ourselves doing it, you know, basically. We know that that's going to happen, but then we have to be wise enough to go, okay, why did that happen? What could I have carved out? So next time, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not shot. So, but a good way to decompress when that happens is to stop. So hmm. stop all together for a minute. Maybe it's uh, for the weekend. Maybe it's for the day. Maybe it's for a week in Cabo. And I like, like to go unplug, to stop, just unplug, shut it down. Whatever, you, whatever it means for you okay. it, to unplug. Um, for me, I like to go to Cabo. That's where my, I end up getting a lot. When I have downtime, my creativity goes through, you know, it goes off the charts. So enough downtime and I come back more uh, fired up and ambitious. So I feel like each of us may be a little bit different in that realm, but so one person's stop might mean, you know, uh, you know, a, a night out with your wife or sure. something like that. So let's call a babysitter and let's go, you know, decompress a night out with the wife. So we all have, you know, for me, it's a, it's a week in Cabo potentially, um, or maybe just go lay out by, you know, go ahead, lay out in the sun for a while and, mm -hmm. um, listen to, uh, Turn listen to some off. music or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Led Zeppelin. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> each of us are different, but I think the short answer is, we got to be willing to stop for a second and regroup, re, uh, you know, reframe the the situation so that we can recharge and recommit. Hmm. Okay, that's great. So that's a lot. That, that that is a that's a whole lifestyle described. Can you describe how you structure your calendar? How do you look at? your months, your years, your weeks, your days? Do you do night before, like write out what I want to accomplish that day? Are you just flying by, hey, whatever this day calls of me, I'm going to go that way? One thing that I do is on the weekends, I sort of look at my week. And then on a daily basis in my uh, 315 routine, I look at what I've got going that day. And so those are sort of my daily, weekly things. So uh, I played around with the annual calendars and um, tried to uh, try to be in those modes as well. But right now I'm working sort of off the, uh, weekly daily thing and it's working out pretty well. I set really long-term goals, right? So I'm building the most magical, um, place in the world outside Disneyland. That doesn't happen in, you know, six months or 12 months or a year, right? That's good. That's a lifetime commitment. That's an infinite approach to, building a family compound. I'm building the most connected community in the world for local entrepreneurs. That's going to last me the rest of my life. I need to make year over year. I need to make some incremental improvements and there'll be some breakthroughs. I'm going to be the fittest man in Placer County when I'm 85. I've got 25 years to get there. So I need to make incremental improvements. You know, so me, for me, I make, I set these grandiose sort of fantastical uh, visions. And then I sort of like chip away of, at them over the days, weeks, months, and years. I think for your podcast, sitting down with people and unpacking their cheat code, like literally get some pen and paper, start drawing it out of them. That could be really cool for people to see. Yeah. I think that's a great idea because I, obviously I talked about the advantage today. I've been talking about a little bit more over the last couple of years. I've always fought it, but maybe hadn't brought it out as a, a theme for my podcast or a, a theme for uh, winning necessarily, even though it comes up in conversation. Every entrepreneur I ever talk about, we want to know what your advantage, you know, what's the secret sauce, dude. Um, we all want to know that, but I, I agree with you uh, that, and I appreciate the advice on my podcast. We talked about this earlier is like coming up with more of a direction versus just stories of winning, maybe in as a theme of those stories, what your secret sauce sauce. So I'm going to boomerang it to you then. What's your secret sauce? What's your uh, edge, your cheat code, your competitive advantage? So my, my drive, one, and then I see, I see things differently. I have a learning disability, so I had to learn to use my brain different than other people, and that allows me to see angles that people don't see. I've had some corporate jobs, you know, and I would – see how they train you to do it and how, what their way is. And I would see a different way to either circumvent that or shortcut that, but really it's just more efficient. And so my cheat code is seeing things that other people don't see and then having a ridiculous drive and ambition to attack that. So can I ask a follow-up question Please. on that? Yeah. Okay. So was there a period of time in your life, maybe it was when you were a kid, 
um, where you, th- you you now recognize that as uh, a cheat code or an advantage or a strength. Was there a time in your life when you maybe thought the opposite? Yeah. Oh, all growing up in school. So I was in special ed classes growing up. Uh, I was kicked out of schools by the time I was in junior high. Um, I couldn't do basic schoolwork. And it was because I don't learn like other people. They wanted to sit me down and have a, have you look at a chalkboard, learn today's lesson, and then now go by yourself and do... And I just couldn't hang. And so I grew up being told there was something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. You got to fix this. You're bad. You go to that class, principal's office, blah, blah, blah. And so it wasn't until <clears throat> I had that attitude until my 30s when I realized like basically what was happening and I was bombing out of corporate because I couldn't fit the mold. They're trying to train a cookie cutter corporate guy. And so I said, well, I'm going to get fired anyway, so let me do it my way. And so I just completely pivoted and did what I thought was best and exploded, just rose up. So that was when I realized, oh, this can be an asset. I just have to find what I'm interested in. And at that time I was interested in winning. I blew my twenties off a little too much partying, you know? So I had this, like, if anybody gives me a shot, I'm going to tear the world a new one. And I did. And then there was no why after that. And so that's what, that's how I got to this yeah. place. Well, that's a good, uh, you know, kind of answer for what are you going to do with what you got? And I think a lot of times we don't realize what we got. Our, our weirdness ends up being, or what might make us feel weird about ourselves might be our biggest gift. Our gift or is our, what makes us sort of maybe even uncomfortable on, or, uh, you know, maybe think less of ourselves at times. I was kind of a daydreamer type of guy and we got criticized for being a daydreamer, right? Is that's like not a good attribute. Well, it turns out that's visualization. Well, manifesting, you know what? Right? You never know, right? <laughs> so what are you going to do with what you got is uh, it's okay to tap into your weirdness or what makes you sort of special because guess what? Everybody's got those things. And if if other people are going to, you you might be complimentary to what other people are doing, or there might be other people that feel the same as you that want to join you. Hmm. I like it. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you like that great episode, check out this one. Another great one. Click, click right here. Please comment, like, subscribe. It really helps these videos get more traction and we can push out more positivity. Thank you so much.